Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. Now, Dillian White gave his assessment of Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pulev and he explained that it was a very strange performance from Anthony Joshua, not necessarily what he's used to, something completely different. He also said that Anthony Joshua seemed to be caught between two different styles, or even three different styles, so there were certain things that Anthony Joshua was doing that was maybe out of character, but there were certain things that showed shades of the past for Anthony Joshua. I think that it was an educated performance from Anthony Joshua, so I think that he wasn't necessarily caught between styles. I think that he was trying to work out Kubrat Pulev, find the punches that would land. Anthony Joshua was fainting a lot more than usual, and he stood tall. He didn't necessarily crouch down, which he has done in the past. He comes down to his opponent's level to kind of meet them head on. In this fight, he was standing tall and jabbing from mid to close range, so what he was able to do is he was dictating the distance and the pace of the fight. So Kubrat Pulev was out of range for most of the fight. He landed a punch here and there, but Anthony Joshua was able to use his physical advantages, his speed and his superior boxing ability to keep Kubrat Pulev at bay. That is what he was able to do. So it wasn't necessarily a fight where Anthony Joshua was a bit disjointed and caught between styles. It was a fight that was tailored perfectly for the opponent he was in there with, Kubrat Pulev who is very awkward, who is unconventional, who likes to apply pressure and make it rough on the inside. That is what he was doing. When they got close, he was smothering Anthony Joshua's work, but the uppercuts were still getting through. So Anthony Joshua was making those adjustments as the fight went on, and I guess that, that could give you the kind of look that he is caught between styles, because he did start that way, with the jab, finding the range, using that jab to the body to keep Kubrat Pulev at bay. Then, all of a sudden, he landed some powerful shots that hurt Kubrat Pulev. He even turned his back. I mean, Eddie Hearn explained that the fight should have been stopped there and then because he turned his back. He didn't want no more. He didn't go down. The ropes didn't hold him up. It was literally he turned away and that is how he got away from the assault that was coming from Anthony Joshua. So that's a separate conversation entirely. But ultimately, Anthony Joshua started finding those power shots that hurt Kubrat Pulev. So he sort of went into that finish mode where he was looking to get the finish against Kubrat Pulev. Kubrat Pulev managed to regather himself at the end of the round and able to make it through until round four. Then he started to warm back into the fight, but that was because Anthony Joshua was allowing him to, not necessarily out of choice, but he's made those mistakes in the past where he rushes in. So he went back to the style that he started with. He wasn't looking for the power punches, he was looking to box and looking to make Kubrat Pulev fall short and make him pay, because the thing about Kubrat Pulev is he's always in range, standing there using his positioning to make sure that his opponent feels his physical presence there. So what Anthony Joshua was doing was he wasn't necessarily going back and allowing Kubrat Pulev to come forwards, but he was holding his ground and making sure that his positioning was perfect so that he had a space to move into behind him or to come around and use angles, which was something that Kubrat Pulev really struggled with. Anthony Joshua beat him at every single aspect in there, beat him at boxing, beat him when they got close and started fighting, because there were so many rabbit punches from Kubrat Pulev, and that is a sign that he was getting frustrated. I mean, the ref wasn't exactly brilliant in there, because Anthony Joshua gave him one back, and he got warned for it. I mean, Anthony Joshua explained in the Ruiz fight, when Ruiz was doing it in the rematch, Ruiz was doing it continuously, then Anthony Joshua gave him one back, and Ruiz complained, but Anthony Joshua explained play the way you want to be played. And it was the same in there with Pulev. Pulev was the one who started it, so Anthony Joshua is the one who will finish it. I mean, I don't think Anthony Joshua was necessarily intentionally trying to land punches around at the back of the head or illegal blows because he didn't need to. Kubrat Pulev needed to. That showed a sign that he was desperate in there with Anthony Joshua. So all in all, I don't think that Anthony Joshua was necessarily caught between styles. I mean, he did look different. There were shades of Many other styles that Anthony Joshua hasn't shown before, many different things that he hasn't done in the boxing ring, but again, it's tailored for Kubrat Pulev, who is unconventional and difficult. So Kubrat Pulev can be very unpredictable at times, you don't know what punches are coming. So what Anthony Joshua had done was play him at his own game. He was unpredictable, he was fainting a lot, and bringing that jab up and down, even if he didn't throw it, Kubrat Pulev didn't know when and where it was coming from. So if Anthony Joshua was too predictable in this fight, then maybe Kubrat Pulev could establish a foothold, find a rhythm, then build into the fight. But Anthony Joshua didn't allow that because he was constantly changing and making those adjustments, which is what matters 
at this level. And also on the flip side, I think that Kubrat Pulev has shown his inability to make those adjustments when it mattered at this kind of level because he was getting caught with the same kind of punches. The uppercut was dynamite for Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev could not find a remedy for it. Just like the left hook in the fight with Vladimir Klitschko, he could not find anything to do that could rectify that kind of punch landing. And that was his downfall in the Klitschko fight, that was also his downfall in the Anthony Joshua fight. But the difference is as well, Anthony Joshua and Klitschko were the ones who made that happen. It's not because Kubrat Pulev made a mistake, it just shows that there is a clear difference between a world level and elite level. That is what showed in this particular fight. And before this fight with Pulev, Anthony Joshua did explain he had been in contact with Vladimir Klitschko just a few weeks before, and Klitschko did give him some advice as to maybe how to beat Pulev, but also just certain things that you can do, and maybe warned him that Pulev is not the kind of fighter who will just lay down. Now, what Anthony Joshua had done was it said that he took that advice with a pinch of salt. So you can think about the way that Klitschko beat Pulev, but that wasn't necessarily going to be the way that Anthony Joshua could do it because styles make a fight. AJ's style is different from Klitschko's. So in there with Anthony Joshua, it was the uppercut that bothered Pulev, whereas in there with Klitschko, it was the left hook that bothered Pulev. So Anthony Joshua didn't necessarily take too much confidence from what Klitschko was able to do, thus not underestimating his opponent Kubrat Pulev. But that difference did show the things that we talked about before the fight, that Pulev was unable to make those adjustments. Having said that, Kubrat Pulev has shown great heart and his will to continue was incredible because he was down and out in that third round, but he found a way to warm him back into the fight. But let's remember, Anthony Joshua is dealing with this thing of not rushing in it too quickly. So that was probably in his head going out in the fourth round, not to rush in because he's got this guy. If it's a boxing match, he can beat him. If it turns into a fight, he can beat him also. So Anthony Joshua at that point was still warming into the fight himself, figuring out what Kubrat Pulev does well and taking those things away, exploiting the weaknesses also. So AJ was in no position to force the fight, he was in no position to need to go for the knockout because he was comfortable and that showed going through the rounds. I mean, Kubrat Pulev, I mean, you could give him maybe one round if he was lucky. Anthony Joshua put on a very dominant display and as Dillian White said, he was caught between styles. I don't necessarily agree that Anthony Joshua was caught between styles. I think that that was the style he chose to implement his game plan against the Kubrat Pulev to do the necessary things to take apart his opponent, an opponent who is very unconventional, who is very unpredictable. So the best way to beat him is to play him at his own game. Anthony Joshua, as we said before, can make those adjustments so he can adjust his style tailored to his opponent. That is what he done in there with Pulev. He was unconventional, he was unpredictable. Pulev did not know when the next punch was coming and where it was coming from. That is why Anthony Joshua beat him in every single aspect in this fight. Guys, anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below, leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Thanks guys.